So let's look now at solving pathway problems using both permutations and Pascal's triangle. And a pathway problem is a counting situation that involves a networking problem. And if you go on and do more advanced math, you'll look at networks and at some of these calculations. One of the simplest form is when there are only two options for directions. So let's consider this pathway. Let's imagine we have to get ourselves from A to B, but we can only go south and east. We want to count all of the different paths. And when we're talking about paths, we want to think that each time these lines cross, there's an intersection. So each of those intersections result in a path or a road. So if we wanted to get from A to B, one path that we could take is we could go south, south, and then east and east. So south, south, east and east would get us from A to B. Well, another potential path is we go south, then east, east, south. South, east, east, south. And if we keep looking at these paths, we can see there's a variety of ways we can get there. We could go south, then east, then south, then east. That would get us to B. Well, maybe we start going east first, and then go east again, and then south and south. Maybe it's east, south, south, east. And of course, our last one, go east, then south, then east, then south. And if we count our way through this small little path, we can see that there's six potential ways to get from A to B. Now, counting is one way to do these if they're small paths, these small squares or rectangles. As they get larger, we want to find a method. And one potential method is to use our knowledge of permutations. Let's consider this path from A to B. And let's consider going south, east, south, east. And we can see that regardless of which path we take, we have to take four roads or four paths. For permutations, that means there's four factorial roads or paths that we can take. But two of those roads take us south and two take us east, which then if we have factorials, we have to divide out our repeats. Four factorial would have to divide by two factorial and two factorial. And if we do this calculation, expand out the factorial, we'll get four times three times two factorial times two factorial over two factorial. The two factorials will cancel each other out, which gives us four times three over two times one which is just 12 over 2, or 6. The exact same number we had before, only this time we did it with factorials. Now, permutations is one method, and permutations does work when all of the paths on the square or rectangle are there. If, by chance, this path didn't exist, we couldn't use permutations. And that's important. When the path is in a perfect square or a rectangle with every path, we have to use another method. And our method involves Pascal's triangle. Now remember Pascal's triangle starts out with a 1, and then we go 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, where each of the numbers below are just added up. That's going to become important with this pathway problem. And the other thing we have to keep in mind is if we want to get from A to B, the only way to go from A to this corner or A to that corner is go straight south or straight east, which means there's only one potential way to get to that corner, go straight east, or one potential way to get to that corner, go straight south. The paths or intersections in the middle are a little different. Well, let's just look at this first one. If we wanted to get to this point right here, we could go east and then south. But we could also go 
south, and then east. That means there are two different paths that we could get to that point with. So another way to think of getting that number two is find the number of intersections that lead to that point. That means this intersection, if there was one path to each of these, together we add them up and there would be two paths to this point. Now that's helpful because if there's one path to here and two paths to here, then the total here must be three. Same thing over here. If there's two and one, they add together and we get three paths. One last one here, three and three, they add together and we get six ways. So it's just like using Pascal's triangle method, just turn it sideways and we can count the number of ways. And the good thing about this counting method with Pascal's triangle is it always works. You can always use this method to count the number of pathways. So let's look at an example of a pathway problem that's a little more complex. Let's find the number of different paths to get from A to B, only moving south and east using two different methods. And the first thing we're going to do is consider getting from A to that coordinate. The first method is going to involve using permutations. And a permutation would just be to get to that blue dot. We look at any path. We have to go one, two, three, four, five roads or five paths. So it must be five factorial. But that path has two going south and three going east. So we can divide out the repeats. Now that gets us to the blue point, but that doesn't get us to B. Well, let's consider another path. Here, there must be one, two, three, four, very similar to that one we did before. There is four factorial for that smaller square. Two of them go south, two of them go east. And when we're doing permutations to find our solution, we find one of the rectangles or squares and the other, and then we multiply them together. So it's five factorial divided by two factorial, three factorial, multiplied by four factorial, two factorial, two factorial. If you plug that all in your calculator, you're going to get out the number 60. So we get 60 ways. Factorials work great. If we have that situation where every path is included, there's no paths that are broken. Well, what about doing Pascal's triangle? And we can do Pascal's triangle. We're gonna consider the same situation to get from A to that blue dot. The only way to get to the corners are go straight down and straight across. And now we just start adding. One plus one is two. 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Again, just bringing those intersections together. 3 and 3 together will be 6, and to the blue dot then is 10. Now, much like we did with the first rectangle, if there's 10 paths to that blue dot, the only way to get across here is to go straight across or straight down. That means that 10 just carries over and goes down. Because if there's 10 paths to the blue, well, once you get to the blue, if you want to get down to this other corner, you got to go straight down. So it's just that 10 carries over. And now we just keep our adding. 10 and 10 is 20. 20 and 10 is 30. 20 and 10 is 30 again. And in the end, we add 30 and 30 and we'll get 60 ways. So Pascal's triangle, that counting method, a very effective way to solve these pathway problems. And again, the good part about Pascal's triangle counting method is it works for every single path, regardless of whether it's a perfect square or a perfect rectangle of paths.
So we're going to look at some more complex path problems as we work our way through this in class.